Today's episode of Thunderheads is brought to you by Wellness Perspective. Wellness Perspective makes it easier for you to live healthfully. They're also making it easier for us to do this podcast. Check them out at mywellnessperspective.com to learn more. You're listening to Thunderheads, a podcast for Thunder fans by Thunder fans. Welcome to Thunderheads. If you're tuning into YouTube Live, we're psyched to have you. I am Brandon Soul, joined as most of always. <laughs> The Thunder Time himself, it is Mr. Justin Wright. Now all Beyonce's and Lucy Lou's and Baby Dolls get on the floor. Outcast. Nice. Thanks for Outcast. thanks for deflecting to me and I, giving me an opportunity. Well, it was like in my head, but I was like, I don't, I can't think of the words. And hey, yeah, correct? Man, that's a great song. It mm. is one of my favorites. You Very know, good. One time, not to get off topic immediately, but also <laughs> to get off topic immediately. Uh, I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast, and they were talking about that song. Someone brought it up, and they talked about how that song lyrically is actually incredibly sad oh yeah and then how there's been renditions made of it and covers where oh. people put a like a sad All the sad spins on it yeah yeah and, and it's it, really good that mm, way yeah it is mm-hmm. doctors in the house it's rob larson hey you guys corn nut fans not a big fan of them really love corn nuts okay but you what kind you probably only like i don't know if i gotta a, have ranch oh no i'm not a, okay. ranch would be bottom of the list okay, just want to make sure i hate everything ranch they're okay I'm, I'm not like the biggest fan of them ever but i do like the ranch ones they're good I, for your breath they're, oh they're yeah. terrible See, my for your breath to really not like them is that earlier when you walked in i said i'm pretty sure someone's eating corn nuts yeah I've, I <laughs> I ate it's them. like it's the same thing with like barbecue i ate like them for I the first before. time in a long time today and First time they're long enjoyable, time? yeah. They're also so loud to eat. No, they're like, so it's like, loud. It's like you're eating marbles. That's why I like. You eat them on a road trip, and everybody else is just annoyed. That's the whole true. car is just corn nuts yeah. for the rest of the time. If you, you did it on a plane, upset. Every oh. every bite, I feel like my teeth are gonna crack in half. <laughs> yeah, just they're so hard. They are so a hard. Dentist. But corn's my favorite vegetable, so hand in hand. That's potatoes. Dark and Stormy's in the house. Jason Lewis. Yes, sir. Potatoes are your favorite vegetable? Oh, yeah, dude. I'd probably agree. Yeah, oh, 100%. Potato- Everything potatoes I eat gold, has potatoes man. in it. All right. Oh, I'm still mad at you, Rob, for your pizza thing. Yeah, pizza's overrated still. <laughs> okay, All let's right, guys. get back into that. All right, today we're going to talk about, we're going to ask where game two went wrong. We'll break down the OK3's fourth quarter struggles. We'll talk Adam's health. The Thunder's plan on guarding Donovan Mitchell going forward. Reasons for optimism and reasons for pessimism. But first, I do want to acknowledge 23 years ago today... Pretty tragic event obviously happened. I believe it is the biggest domestic uh, terror, act of terror in the United States, right? It, it was the deadliest. Up until September 11th, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Is it not? It doesn't still stand as a domestic act? Though? Yeah, as a domestic act. Well, yeah, it, yeah. it was the act on domestic terror, like domestic soil, yeah. Right. But from a domestic citizen, yes. Correct. And, uh, yeah, and, and so it's important being that we all live in Oklahoma City. I'm from Oklahoma City. I believe you're from Oklahoma City, Justin. I believe you're I was from... in prior when it happened, but yeah. So you guys are, well, Rob's not from here, but, you know, we're all pretty close to the situation. <laughs> if you guys know what we're talking about, we're talking about the 1995 Oklahoma City bombing, and it was, I remember where I was that day. I mean, I, it, it's so vivid to me. I, I could hear it. I was in first grade, and I was in class, and you could hear it. Right. It's just, it's, it's a crazy thing, and I felt it necessary for us to acknowledge it. For sure. All right, let's just jump right into it from that. Let's pick it up from that. <laughs> Man, I don't even know where to start with this game. Another, another terrible start for the Thunder, right? You, you, 0-9 to jump out of the gates. Mm-hmm. And that comes on the heels of a 14-6 out of the gates in game one. Right. 14-4, yeah. But, but then you, you, they tied up 9-9. You feel like they're they getting it going a little bit. Man, it just fell apart in the fourth quarter, though. Just fell apart. So I want to ask you guys, I want to go around the table, I want everyone to answer, and I want to start from there. Whoever goes first is fine. What's your main takeaway from this game, too? Um, I, I think that basically Utah made adjustments, and that's kind of what we I, I thought would happen. Like I'm not amazed by it or anything, but um, we just didn't play with the same intensity that we played with in game one. That was obvious, and... That got us beat, and we did. We played terrible and lost by seven. So, it's not the worst situation. Like everybody's freaking out, but it's it could be way worse. Like we could have gotten destroyed. We should have gotten destroyed the way mm-hmm. we played for f- three of the four quarters. Does so. anyone agree with that? Everyone agree with that? I mean, I agree with most of that. I think that. It, does it worry you though that it, it felt like Utah makes adjustments, and did the Thunder make adjustments? I don't think. I don't think we really did that much. Like. We put 
PG a little bit more on Donovan, which didn't do much. Mm. <laughs> um, but I, I, he was on him a little bit more. But other than that, I think we did mostly the same thing. I mean, we had to adjust because Adams got in foul trouble, which hurt us really badly. Right. That's another point to why the loss is like, uh, mm-hmm. of course it happened. Yep. But, I mean, Grant played 30 minutes, so. Yeah, and Donovan Mitchell really didn't have a good game until the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's where he started killing the Thunder. And I, I think it was like 5 of 15 in the third some, at some point. So it was like he it, didn't do anything until don't you think the end you, of the third. Don't you think you can pin this entire game on the fourth quarter? Yeah. Oh, ab- absolutely. 100%. <laughs> 100%. Well, it's, I mean, Stephen Adams going out, you know, that's what, that's the biggest thing. I, I think that fourth quarter, Stephen Adams goes out and the game really changed. Now, it was already kind of slipping away. Like you had that 10 point lead with a minute two left in the third quarter. Mm hmm. And then everything just kind of so you you give up f- uh, what was it five straight to end the quarter to the Jazz and like they they cut into the deficit and then they start off the fourth quarter just just tearing away at the Thunder. But I really feel like once Stephen Adams actually went out because he he had three big buckets and mm-hmm. then fouls out of the game. Yep. At the, the foul trouble throughout the game and then that kind of final nail in the coffin just opened things up. I, Donovan Mitchell, like, it, it seemed like the defense was kind of out of whack. He was able to get to his spots a lot easier. Uh, yeah, I, I think Steven Adams threw off the rotations, uh, threw off the defensive uh, just positioning and everything. I, I really think that was the key that, that really turned it because at, at, at no point in that fourth quarter did I feel like the Thunder – would have like, like we're just going to get blown out until and granted it was early but Stephen Adams goes out and it's like they're not going to be able to do this right it's it seemed kind of like the entire team got deflated all of a sudden uh-huh. as soon as that happened and it's not like they were playing well before that happened really I mean like you said Stephen got a couple buckets and stuff but like the big three didn't hit a damn thing on quarter and they were even getting semi okay looks oh for fourteen of. in that quarter didn't hit any yeah, yeah I mean and and some of those calls against Stephen Adams rough I mean yeah. it. I, I didn't get a chance. I wanted to go back and watch all six fouls and see how many of them really felt legit. And, you know, at first when on the one that fouled him out, I thought it w- wasn't the right call. Upon no. replay, I, I actually, I, I can see where they call it. You know, he wasn't he wasn't full on vertical. But it's the one, he had a few before that that I think you, you can question a little bit. I think Utah took something like 16 free throws in that well, fourth quarter. 16 in the fourth. And yeah, because we were actually ahead uh, at halftime. We were up by two in free throws. And then... <laughs> and in the, in the game ends, uh, Utah shoots 33 and the Thunder shoot 18. Right. This is crazy. So, Rob, what's your main takeaway here? Um, so, for me, I, don't, I mean, I was really worried about this this game at halftime because the Thunder aren't a very good third, third quarter team. And then just the way that the game was going, it just, to me, it was like, it just sort of felt like a game that the Thunder just didn't have it for. Right. Like, it just didn't feel like it was something that was going to end well. And then the third quarter happens, and it was like, holy cow, mm-hmm. they turn it around. Like, that's awesome. They Maybe that's back up. something that was a little different from the regular season. They actually, like, came through in that third quarter. It happened so quick in that third quarter, too. Yeah. Like, and it, it was, it was like, like a 19-0 run or something in that mm-hmm. third quarter. But I, I think my main takeaway was, was kind of what you talked about, where it seemed like Utah had made the adjustments from game one, and the Thunder didn't really do enough in game to come to combat that. And the biggest thing for me, which was a little bit weird, was I thought that Utah did a really good job with Derek Favors. Yeah. He obviously, killed the Thunder, especially in the first half. Obviously the the offensive rebounds were one thing, but I, I'm just mostly talking about stuff that you probably don't see in the stat sheet where just the game plan was different, mm-hmm. where you had a lot of Derek Favors coming up to the high post and them getting the ball to him and letting him pivot and kind of running offense through that. Mm-hmm. I thought that was extremely well played by Utah and Billy Donovan didn't do enough to to kind of fight that off or or to make changes to kind of make Favors a little bit more uncomfortable in those spots. You didn't see a lot of adjustments just, you know, kind of easy to see from Billy Donovan in this game where, t- to your point, from Quinn Snyder and the Jazz, it looked like, you know, you could kind of see those adjustments right off the bat. You see Favors knock down a couple corner threes. They were basically telling, hey, shoot that. You know, yeah, he shoots it, like 27% or something on the se- on the season. What he made, he made, made two of them, I think. And then, yeah, the offensive boards, they go big. They bring in Jay Crowder not for Favors. They bring in Jay mm-hmm. Crowder for Ingles early, and they go big, yeah. And which I thought was a really good play. Yeah. It's, it's kind of weird that 
where you, I mean, we're used to in, ser- in years past where like the Thunder have gone, have done that same move mm-hmm. and taken a series. And now we, it's like, do we have the ability to match up with that? Like, do we have anything to combat mm-hmm. the favors go bear thing? And it didn't feel like we did last night. Like, I, and one thing on the boards that I keep noticing them doing is what a lot of teams were doing near the end of the season with Adams is they just, every time he tries to get a rebound, they just swarm him. Yeah. Like he's just instantly surrounded by like three people and we don't have anybody else that's going in there and trying to help right. out. No one's being aggressive on the boards. And it's really frustrating when you see Derek Favors get three, four rebounds in a couple possessions and you're like, Oh, in one possession. Yeah. In one yeah. possession. And you're like, man, and it, it keeps happening. One. It keeps happening. It seems like something that, okay, Hey, focus on this. You got to start rebounding the ball. You're going to get killed. And the, and the thing is, is that it could have been worse for the Thunder. I mean, I think he had one, this possession you're probably talking about where I think Favors had three offensive rebounds on the same possession and felt like Utah might have four as a team. They didn't score on that yep, possession. Right. No Adams in there at that point. That was against Grant and Patterson, mm-hmm. I yeah. believe, mm-hmm. were the two guys that were in there at that time. But And maybe, you know, going back to talking about game planning and adjustments, maybe it's a little unfair to Billy Donovan to say he, he didn't make any changes because of the Adams thing, because of Adams being in foul trouble so often. Well, and maybe it's hard. Maybe that just kind of forced his hand. But to like, wrench in your game plan. Yeah, maybe well, whatever he was trying to do, if there was other stuff, he couldn't really try it. Also, there. you, what were they down six, I think, or seven at half? Like, you came out and you looked really good in the third quarter. Mm-hmm. You won the third quarter by double digits. So, I mean, maybe to Billy Donovan's credit, maybe they did do something different. And then you do have trouble with that, foul trouble with Adams. And I, maybe it is unfair to blame Billy, but I, I just felt like watching that game, like, you could just tell the Thunder just didn't have it. And yeah. I don't, it sucks that they lost the game, but it just seemed like early on and definitely at halftime, it just seemed like you could tell that that was going to be a loss. It's a 33, 21 in the third quarter in the Thunder's favor. At one point it was 31, 14 in that quarter when they had that 10 point lead. Utah closes on a 35 to 18 run. Thunder only scores 16 points in that fourth quarter. I mean, just a complete turn in, in the team Obviously, we already talked about uh, Mello, Paul George, and, and Westbrook go 0 for 14 in that fourth quarter. It's a little frustrating that this team is turning into a jump shooting team. I mean, I, I don't want to say they're turning into a jump shooting team because I think maybe that's just who they are. Yeah. I mean, they kind of have been this season. Like Right, but that's just not the thunder we're used to. You know, you used to go in and get in, figure out a way to get easy buckets, but right now it feels like if their shot's not falling, they're not, they're going to have a tough time winning. When I was watching some of the fourth quarter again today and they actually did try to go to the rim like a couple times. It just didn't work. Like they were just getting mauled every time they tried to do anything. So going back to Steven Adams, it's, he had those three buckets inside and it was kind of like that. The same thing that happened in game one is that you got late in the game Steven Adams got more involved as you've worn down to go bare. He started to find some success and then picks up that sixth foul. If that's allowed to continue, if the Thunders start to get a little bit of success in the paint with Adams on that pick and roll, maybe you open something up. Maybe Russ, all of a sudden, when he's when he's peeling off of that pick, he gets to his spot and feels a little bit more confident because the guy's been rubbed off rather than where the guy sticks with him the entire time, has to go to the rim. There's a giant rim protector that's 7'4 and wants to block your shot, and he's not going at the body. And, you know, maybe that changes things, but I really do think that Steven Adams, like, going out, you lose your paint presence like we had in game one down the stretch. You, you kind of lost everything. Everything got super out of whack, and then the big three miss all those shots. I'm real worried about Steven Adams. Like, health-wise? Yeah, health-wise. Royce tweeted out during the game that when Adams came back in uh, to the game, he had he removed a, a huge ice pack yeah. from that hand. I mean, it was covering the entire forearm. Yeah, and so it, it looks to me, and then whenever you see him come in, I don't know if it's a little numb or what it is, but like he seems to hold his hand in a certain, his right hand in a certain way mm-hmm. for a while, especially uh, immediately after he gets in. And so I just kind of worry that, that there's something... I don't know, something bigger there that's really kind of affecting Adams. Uh, you look, he, he was four or five, but still, I mean, he just doesn't look the same. And so for me, that's a huge concern going forward, especially whenever you had a really nice break between games one and two. And so I don't know. that That's the biggest concern for me going forward is Adams' health. It is a huge concern, uh, and he continues to deny, 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 deny. But, yeah. I mean, Adams mm-hmm. isn't the one to make excuses. He's not He's not the one to admit to injury. He's never going to do that. But at the same time, he played 22 minutes. Yes, he fouls out. 
he had a good game in those 22 minutes. Nine points, seven boards, had an assist and a steal, was four for five from the field. Just didn't get an opportunity to really mm-hmm. expand on that game that he was having. He has to be good in this series. He has to oh, be yeah. good. It, to your point, Rob, he has to be good. So you said he had a good game. I feel like, and maybe it has something to do with foul trouble, Like I just kind of feel like he disappears um, at times, and we're talking about, uh, what would you say, 20... 22 minutes. 22 minutes. So, I mean, I don't know. That just, to me... Like, at times, he just has disappeared, especially in Game 2, not necessarily just because of foul trouble, but it just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to be the same. Yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying. He's got the he's got the worst plus-minus on the team in this series so far. And, and that was and with... The guy, and the guy that's re- replacing him in those minutes is Jeremy Grant. He's the one with the best plus-minus on the And that team. was with him sitting out in that fourth quarter for a, a big... You know, for a chunk of that, whenever Utah went on that mm-hmm. really right. big run too. So, well, it it seemed to me like he got his hands on a lot of rebounds, but he couldn't like get them. Like I, I was noticing, he would like hit the ball, and it just wouldn't. He wouldn't grab it. Somehow. And if, if something's wrong with his arm, his hand, his wrist, whatever it is, you better believe Utah's in the in yeah. you know in there swiping at it. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, why like wouldn't you smacking him? Because he's the guy that I mean, he has probably the strongest grip in the entire NBA when it comes to offensive rebounds, especially. So you're right, Jason. When he's getting his hand on balls, it's like I mean, he can't hold on to them. They're not letting him hold on to the balls. <laughs> yeah, hmm. agreed. So where did the Thunder lose this? <laughs> where did the Thunder lose this game? Is it is it somewhere in what we've talked about? Is it those free throws in the fourth quarter? Is it the fourth quarter only? Is it? The, did they get fo- too far behind on those favors offensive rebounds in the first half? What did, is it? Didn't it just kind of feel like one of the the regular season games? One one of the ones where you're just like like the going back to that the Kings loss or not, not to say that Utah is like such a bad team that they could, they, they should be compared to the the Kings and the Lakers and the Suns of, of the NBA, but it, it kind of felt that way. It kind of felt like the the Thunder just didn't they didn't lock in all right. the way. And they they reverted to bad habits, bad tendencies, and that's kind of what got them beat. And, and my, you know, I I don't want to keep harping on them, but you miss fourteen shots. The three of them miss fourteen shots. You're yeah. not going to win a whole lot of games. You didn't make one. Yeah, yeah. Not didn't make even a one. One yeah. in the fourth quarter. You're right. And all you it, have to do is that you you make four of those, you win that game. If well, they make four of those shots, they win that game. And that's a, that's, that's what's in crazy. a game where no one on the team was above twenty points. Like everyone was under twenty, and yeah, and then, I, and, then to, and then to Justin's point, you look at the numbers: six for eighteen from Melo, he had seventeen points. So points are less than his field goal attempts. Yeah. Paul George, eighteen points on twenty-one shots. Russell Westbrook, nineteen points on nineteen shots. Yeah, I mean, so I think like this team can win games when one of their guys or two of their guys has a bad shooting night. But if all three of them have a bad shooting night, like, you're not gonna win. Like you're just not gonna win. Yeah, and the game was, you know, the Thunder were down by four with like. Yeah. Most of the fourth quarter, it seemed. They had opportunities. Yeah. And to your point, you lose by seven. It really, it's a, it's a close game. The box score, it looks like a bit of an anomaly. We laughed so hard at Ricky Rubio. <laughs> uh, he hits five threes. He comes back, hits five threes. He's six for 16 from the floor. So he didn't shoot well, but he shot well from three. Right. But all of his threes were coming within the flow of the offense. Where yeah. in game one, he's dribbling into his shots, right? Yeah, he's taking weird pull up jumpers that were like sideways and it's like well yeah game, shoot ga- those game two it's catch and shoot it's it's practice it's shooting practice from the corners utah was getting so many good mm-hmm. looks and they missed a lot of them they did that's the like scary Crowder thing missed several open looks and i was like that's where you got to be scared but when i look at the box i'm like man this is a bit of an anomaly and the thunder barely lost right and it's it's it, I, it's kind of one of those things where it's like we said about game one where it's like well we only won by eight but it wasn't that close but this game was felt a lot more close, mm-hmm. even though the point spread was the same. But, I mean, it just kind of felt like we were in it further, I guess. Thunder never never, never had their uh, had a firm grip on this game, yeah. to your point. I yeah. mean, they, were, they were had that the, run, and then it was just... Yeah, and, and that was just so quick and so fast. It, just, it felt just like just that, a run. Yeah. It didn't feel like, oh, they have control of this game now because it happened so fast. Whereas game one, they just kind of kept control of the game throughout. Mm-hmm. And it was execution, like in that fourth quarter, that kind of worries me a little bit. Like you, it just it seemed like they kind of panicked a little bit. And um, I mean, shot selection wasn't great. Like we, you, you brought All up night. the stat over fourteen, but 
a lot of those, I mean, some of the, like definitely at the end as well. Like you have, I can't stand it when Carmelo gets a <laughs> rebound and dribbles the ball off the court. Like there's one, almost always one thing that's going to happen. He, he just shoots it. And without why, a single pass, he just shoots it. He's going to shoot it every time, and I don't think you can stop it. The way that I, I think all year is when he actually does make it, it's when someone comes and sets a screen for him. Let him at least get a screen so he can get a better open look the, and feel better about the it. The frustrating part about that, though, is last night he did that. He shot it. He missed it. They they come back down the very next time. Mm-hmm. Russ brings the ball up the court. They get a screen. Melo's open on the side, and he drains the three. Mm-hmm. Like That's what's frustrating is that it's... Too many wasted possessions is what it feels like. Yeah. Like that. Like it's you know, you, you know it's so low percentage that we've seen this entire year. That's such a low percentage play where you literally have no passes and they still do it. It's frustrating. You know, it, it goes back to so, you know, right before the series started, I I made the comment that I don't think Utah can score enough to win in a seven game series. I think through two games we've seen Utah can't score enough. I, I really I don't think the Thunder uh, I don't think the Jazz necessarily won that game. I don't think they won game two. I th- the Thunder lost it. The yeah. Thunder pissed it away. I'm with you. By, by really poor play. The Jazz can't outscore this team. They just have to one like play really good defense and get kind of lucky. They did those things in game two. They, they, and I, that's what happened. I think you're right. I, I think the Thunder are going to win or lose this series on the offensive end. Yeah, that's what it's about for me. And I think that. Maybe it's a bit delusional coming into this series from from us, from me, from Thunder fans to say that this team is going to be okay in this series. Uh, you, you know, I, I felt really good about this series. I still feel okay the about this team. series. Right. They're the best shoes. They have shot makers uh, that have a history of making shots. But for whatever reason, there's just this lack of chemistry that's kind of hung around throughout the season and it kind of shows its face every other three games or whatever. Thunder won four in a row. That's about all they're capable of doing yeah. until they really kind of fall back in it a little bit. Yeah, and I just, I kind of think <clears throat> what we saw throughout the year was bad free throw shooting, and that was <clears throat> what, like, made games closer than they should have been down the stretch, and then the Thunder get tight. This this game, like I said earlier, is just, it's kind of bad shot selection, wasted possessions mm-hmm. that, you know, keep, give... Utah, a huge advantage there. You don't make Utah work on the defensive end. You just help them out. Those wasted possessions keep the game closer than it should be, and then you get really tight, and this team doesn't know how to close those kinds of games for the most part, and so then we see a loss happen. Agreed. Hey, guys. It's time to tell you about our sponsor, Wellness Perspective. If you're a regular listener, you know by now that Wellness Perspective is a growing community of regular people and business partners that make it easier for you to live a happy, healthful life. That is correct. And you also know by now that Wellness Perspective provides support, motivation, advice, and big time. I mean, a huge discount on the services, products, and memberships that are essential to living healthfully. Mm. One of their partners, ARC, Athletic Recovery and Rehabilitation, is having a Marathon Recovery Day the Sunday and Monday after the Oklahoma City Marath- Memorial Marathon, which is Sunday, April 29th. You going to run in it? Uh, Maybe. Yeah. No, well, I'm not. You going I'm, half marathon I'm or full? Full. No. Why would you never do? <laughs> do a, maybe the, the 5K. Yeah. Can you do a 14th of a marathon? Uh, I don't know what that is. I probably that's still the, couldn't make that'd it. That'd still be like two miles almost. Ooh, that's far. <laughs> I want to so do a hundred, one, 104th of a marathon. That yeah. Sounds good. There you go. Walk, walk. You just skip. <laughs> they're having a deal for a $20 uh, day pass to their recovery center, which includes their hot and cold whirlpools, infrared saunas, and Normatec compression boots. Yeah, and we told you guys about ARC. Sorry, Jason. We told we went to ARC a couple weeks ago, and we got to use yeah. some of this stuff, and it's a really cool place. So if you're planning on doing the marathon or you know someone that is, definitely tell them about it. Yeah, us. it's really awesome. And if you bring your marathon medal, you'll get a free float and cryotherapy, or or not and, <laughs> or Too cryotherapy late. session. They are <laughs> contractually <laughs> obligated to give deal. both now. No, so free float or cryotherapy session, both of those things are really cool. So try those out. So visit arcrecoveryok.com. That's A-R-C recoveryok.com for directions and their contact information if you do need them. And follow them on Facebook at facebook.com slash arcrecoveryok. And go check out mywellnessperspective.com today. Get yourself a membership for just $7.97 a month and start saving money and living healthy. Get it. All right, so let's talk about Russ. Let's kind of focus in on Russ. Is he is he playing well enough? 
Is he doing what he needs to do for the Thunder to win this series in these first two games? He's definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> no, and that's what that was partially why game one was as close as it was. Like bad decisions from Russ mm-hmm. is was what made that game an eight point game in game one. And so I don't it, shot selection we talked a little bit about in our chat last night. Like shot selection for Russ is just not good enough. Mm-hmm. And whatever you want to blame that on, whether you want to say Rudy Gobert is anchored down in the middle, um, <clears throat> whatever mean, it is, Russ has to be better than what he's afraid of down low, right? Isn't that to be expected? Yes. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it. That was my main concern coming in, that Russ mm-hmm. wasn't going to be aggressive. Russ has not been aggressive going to the hole. He's been His shot has been blocked one time this series. Mm-hmm. Right. I want it to be blocked 15 times. Yeah, just, like, I don't care. Just slam yourself into him every time. I would rather him <laughs> shoot 8 for 30 and force his way to the to the rim and force the officials to do something with their whistle. Right, and that... that sorry. Um, oh, I think that's a huge part of game two is that is something that Jazz did to us that we did not do to them. Yes, the officiating was bad, but they forced it. We didn't do that. So if Russ can do that, if... I mean, everybody on the team needs to try to do that. Especially Russ. Especially Russ. Like, he's so good at it. Mm -hmm. Like, be who you are. What's the best way to nullify a shot blocker? Into the body. Go right at the body every single time. Russ has to do that. Look, Rudy Gobert had two fouls. Mm -hmm. Two fouls in game two. Two. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. His his arms are like eight feet long. He's going to foul someone just by standing next to them sometimes. I think those were both in the... First half too. They were, yes. yeah, I, I think, think so. Yeah, because he and Adams got in foul trouble mm-hmm. in that first quarter. I think that one of them was on a rebound. Rudy had that one. If like Russ drove, yeah, it caught caught Russ's arm. That was his second foul, and, and that was it. The other one was that was, was it. And nothing else. You had go at the body, go at him, find a way because obviously in game one, like when Rudy Gobert goes out with foul trouble, it, it worked out well. Yeah. Changes you the gotta, game. Yeah, you got to go at him. Stephen Adams has to go at him. He, he's he's scared to take that that floater that he has. But you got to go inside to him. Russ really, really, really needs to go at it. Mm-hmm. It's just it's. And after the game, he said he really picked apart uh, Utah's defense. That he got what he wanted. And like, yeah, I, I totally believe that. Ro- that Russ thinks that he got what he wanted. But it's it's the turnaround, you know, fifteen footer that that goes off the glass like. The twelve yeah, percent shot. If, if, he, <laughs> if, if he takes two of those in a in a game, he'll make one of them. That's just kind of who Russ is. But I don't want him taking three or four. No, I don't want him. You know, consistently relying on that bank shot or just like getting himself into positions that he doesn't shoot the ball very often and really doesn't shoot it that well. I'd rather him take the pull up three that we hate when no one's on him mm-hmm. than yeah. I would him go down there and try to just. Take a contested turnaround off the glass yeah. mid range jumper. I the the thing that's worrying me the most is when I'm when you watch Russ right now in the series and Gobert's on the floor, he has a lane. He'll have a lane, and you can see hesitation in him. Mm-hmm. He got he had one play in the fourth quarter last night, one of his misses, one of his uh, forty one misses, <laughs> uh, where he, I think he wanted the foul. I think Ingles was guarding him, and uh, Gobert was just around the corner. But but Russ just wasn't crafty at all, and he just kind of threw his body into him, which Russ Russ does sometimes. But he he did it five feet away from the basket instead of at the basket. Right. It, it, he seems just a little scared away from going in there. He's got to overcome that if the Thunder want to win this series. I completely agree. Yeah, and I thought I thought Jason made a really great point that I think no it, way it was. Yes. <laughs> I mean, like the officiating. I mean, the officiating was bad. We're not saying it was only bad against the Thunder. Mm-hmm. Like, the officiating in that game was terrible there on, was a hu- on the, both sides. I had zero complaints about the officiating in the first game, and then this one was, eh. But it's both ways. Not that we're just sitting here saying the Definitely. Thunder lost because of they only called fouls on the Thunder. Yeah, but, I mean, they, eh. <laughs> but they did. Those <laughs> damn gray <laughs> shirts messed up the game. <laughs> but I do wonder, like, with Russ, whenever he comes out, and starts the game so well. Like, shoot, he was four for seven in that first quarter. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it gets in his head. He's like, I've got it going a little bit tonight. And then as the game goes on, like, he has a hot start. As the game goes on, he struggles. And so I do wonder if there's, like, something to that. Because, like Justin said, like, he can get whatever he wants. And he has to do that. He has to, like... It has to be his game. He has to control it the entire time. That's what the Thunder need him to do. And so, 
I don't know. Like whenever he gets hot like that, I feel I feel like he just wants to continue to score, and I think that's like not the not the best way for Russ to play. I think if you're Billy, you got to try to get him as many minutes as possible when Go Bears off the floor, mm-hmm. in, in some way. Like get him going at the rim. He needs a couple layups in a row. Like we're used to seeing Westbrook be able to force, even in the playoffs in the past. Yeah. I know you had Kevin Durant on your team in the past, and that obviously helps. But you still have Paul George and Carmelo Anthony, yeah. who are at least stretching the floor. Like you should be able to get to the rim because that's who you are. Yeah. Don't get away from who you are, and that's what I feel like he's doing. Only four free throws in game two. He shot nine in game one. He's shooting the ball at the line well right now. I think we all trust him at the, regardless of his terrible free throw shooting season. Yeah, I still trust him to get there in and, the playoffs. And make them. It, like, yeah, he has a knack for making them when they really when they need to be made. He's got to get there, man, or it's just going to... That's my biggest thing with this series. Paul George can shoot 6 for 21. Carmelo Anthony can shoot for 6 for uh, six for 18. And I still think the Thunder can win games in this series if Russ is just aggressive and it goes at Gobert, as you're saying, Justin. Yeah, I mean, this isn't, this isn't Golden State. This isn't Houston where you just have to have all, like, all hands on deck offensively. You just... First 140 wins... This is something where you just you really need one big night from one of those guys, mm-hmm. and you just you didn't get it. You just straight didn't get it. Yeah, and that's it. And you don't want to you don't want to hang on this game. One you lost one game. I mean, yeah. you could have probably predicted that the Thunder were going to split to open this series. I hey, mean, that's Utah's another... also lost one game. Right. So I mean, it's kind of Utah's a good team. They're the best defensive team on the second half of the season by a mile, and the Thunder had no problem scoring against that team in game one. I know they shot the ball really well, but. You gotta, you gotta figure out. I mean, you gotta make adjustments going forward because Utah, the the way the Thunder are playing right now, I feel like it's way too easy to adjust to them and say we're just gonna take away what you do well or what you've been doing well, and the Thunder have to figure out a way to adjust. Let's move on to Donovan Mitchell, who had a great fourth quarter, thirteen points in that fourth quarter, kind of tore the Thunder up. Um, he's a rookie. We talked about it last time that I think the Thunder are okay with letting him go off a little bit as long as you're limiting the other the other guys. Right. Uh, so with that being said, is Corey Brewer doing a sufficient job, number one? And number two, do you take the same approach you've had at guarding Donovan Mitchell going forward? I think Corey Brewer is doing a great job on Mitchell. I like agree. I wouldn't change... I wouldn't change that at all. Yeah, Corey Brewer was amazing in that third quarter. Yeah. He was so good. Like... On defense, like he got it, he got them going on the defensive end, yep. which obviously makes it so much easier offensively. Like that was a hundred percent, like his energy, um, his defense, like that was a hundred percent what got them going and and what why they went on such a big run. Which <laughs> I love this, <laughs> you're just filling it back up. But I wouldn't, yeah, I don't think I, I feel confident now. Like there was a little concern that maybe the knee would was not 100%. He said to himself he wasn't 100%. So there was some concern there because like Donovan Mitchell is really good. And mm-hmm. so if if Brewer isn't 100%, what does that mean? Like Paul George has to guard him some or I don't know. It, to me, like that's not a concern anymore. I feel extremely confident with Brewer guarding Donovan Mitchell whenever they're on the court. Together. I agree. I mean, Donovan Mitchell was really good getting to the rim, but shooting the ball, they made it tough for him shooting the ball. But that's not really... Like, that's where you need Steven Adams. You mm-hmm. need Jeremy Grant. Those guys mm-hmm. have to pick... They have to pick that that end up because he's going to get around. He'll get around whoever well, how, you how, put out there. How have you... F- yeah, you're right. It, have you? How have you felt about Jeremy Grant's minutes? Because he's, he's played pretty well, I think. Yeah. Do you think the concern about playing him with those starters, and you saw him close the game last night, the Thunder played a really big lineup to close the game last night without Adams. I mean, about as big as you can possibly play without Adams, you know. <laughs> I think you had Patterson, Mello, Grant, and Paul George all on the floor at once. Russ was out there. Obviously, the lineup didn't work. Um, yeah. <laughs> but how do you feel about Grant playing 30 minutes? Are we going to see more Grant going forward? Because it, he's not scared to go at Gobert. And I love that yeah, so much. right. He's still and he's got long this. enough to go around it's Gobert so weird. somehow. It's somehow. so weird still. Yeah, like just that so he can just yeah. stretch Armstrong himself around an eight foot tall. <laughs> That's person. exactly what it is. Like, how is that possible? <laughs> how do they have the same length of arms? Yeah, those yeah. two. It and seems he's like four foot shorter. I, I still think you know if scientifically, if Adams isn't in foul trouble, I still think that 
pretty much every minute that go bears on the floor. You need Steven Adams out mm-hmm. there. You could play Jeremy Grant. Like that's, that's fine. He can go at go bear, but especially like when you, I feel like Derek favors, especially can like really out physical Jeremy Grant, sure. Rudy Gobert. I don't think it out physical him. He's just, you know, like bigger, a foot taller. Right. But as far as like Derek favors, when he's out on the floor with Jeremy Grant, especially defensively, like Derek favors is just going to push him around and be like, I'm just going to do whatever the hell I want. But I, like if I, I don't, I'm that. not scared of Derek Favors really. Like he had a great game, and maybe that's naive of me. Very good game. He had a great game, but I, maybe it's naive of me. But I, like, I have a hard time believing Derek Favors is just going to kill you this series. Like, yeah. Are you one to think that Melo needs to play more than I mean uh, Grant needs to play over Melo right now because of what, what Derek Favors did to hit Melo in Game Two as far as just outplaying him in every facet. It's certainly an adjustment that you can take a look at, but I, I still go back to the. I'd rather have Melo out there probably just for the the sheer fact that, man, if Melo gets hot offensively, mm-hmm. like you, you score 120, you're going to beat the Jazz, hands down. So I, I think you kind of roll the dice with, with Melo a little bit more. I think you score 105, you're going to beat the Jazz literally yeah, every probably, time. Yeah. Like I don't. But <laughs> what I will say is like my biggest concern is like it seems like Patrick Patterson just cannot mm-hmm. cannot put Patrick Patterson on That's favors at all. Like well, the, that is his, the biggest he concern. Can't rebound. He's not a rebounder. Yeah. Doesn't block it. Like and he also doesn't have he doesn't put out the effort that mm-hmm. you get with like Jeremy Grant because yeah. favors that those that was all effort whenever mm-hmm. he was out there. I mean, yeah. there's a little bit of like positioning, being in the right spot to get those rebounds, knowing where to go. But like Patterson is, is a disaster against favors. And it's a shame too, because I think if you ideally, what a better way to counter how effective Gobert is than to place Patterson at center if he can rebound, if he can block out and he can play with yeah. energy. You can stretch exactly. Go, can't you can stretch Gobert out. And I think, I just don't think you can trust him. Now, should they try it? Maybe they should try it. And I think that's what's a little intriguing about playing Grant at the five a little more, which obviously he got a lot of time at the five last night, and he, he was a plus one in the game. Uh, he's not going to stretch Gobert way out. They're going to let Grant shoot happily, but mm-hmm. you have to at least respect him driving because Jan- Jeremy Grant can jump over you. Yeah, or he, around you somehow. Yeah, or, yeah, or around you somehow. So <laughs> it might at least get, get Gobert out of there just a little bit. But once again, it, it that ties back to me. Like, it's like one of those things. I don't want it to have to be. You have to get Gobert out of there. I want Russell Westbrook to be the fearless Russell Westbrook we know. Yeah, and go. Uh, to is get there is there Gobert any part, on the bench? <laughs> is there is there any part of you that that sees Game Three Westbrook goes in the Westbrook mode where he's just like, I, whatever. I'm I'm going at him now. Like. Here we go. Honest, was, it, it was like beginning of the year Westbrook, what we've seen in game one and two, getting everyone involved, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Because Paul George goes off in game one, and it's the most Westbrook thing ever to do to try to keep him going in game two. Right. He doesn't. And now Westbrook will be like, screw it. Here I go. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of what I was hoping for it to happen in game three was that we're going to get that December Russ again yeah. where he's just a beast. And we need him to be that every game this series. You have to have him. Agreed. And if Paul George can happen to be playoff P around that, that would be preferred. Westbrook's just not been as good of a player as we know him to be in this series. Yeah. I know he can be better. I'm just going to go ahead and pre-order my uh, Russell Westbrook poster from Game Three. Ooh. I, I think who's he dunking on? I I would I would want it to be Rudy Gobert. That would be so amazing, uh, I, but it's I, not happening. I, know, I, I could I, I, first Rudy Gobert. I think second Ricky Rubio, and then I think third mm. Joe Ingles, and then fourth Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> but those are my, my top four players. We dunk on the well fifth done. all of the players. The crowd the fifth would be every player <laughs> yeah, yeah. on the court. You know, Quinn Snyder. Weird, if, if <laughs> he runs out there. If there's any player in the NBA that could dunk on an entire t- an entire roster for, that is for some reason at the rim, LeBron I, James. It would be <laughs> Russ and LeBron. What would be the two? <laughs> I just wanted to one A and one B. Get that wrong. All right. So before we get on to our game, what are some reasons to be optimistic? <laughs> no, 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 we got no. a pessimistic table here. No, I mean, I think, I think the reasons are We're, okay. Before we get this, sorry, we'll we'll get to. Never you. mind. I'm gonna let you finish. Yeah, no, I'm gonna let you continue <laughs> that thought. But where are you leaning? Optimist? Optimist for sure. Okay. I'm still picking the same way I picked before. Um, I think this the Thunder played a terrible game mm-hmm. and they lost by not as much, and that's good. Russ has not had a good game this series, and we won one. That's good. He's gonna be better. I hope. 
I'm def- definitely optimistic. I will say if they lose game three, that will probably turn because then we've seen two games. You know, obviously you, you look at two games that you lose in a row and that's going to create a little bit of doubt. But as of right now, definitely optimistic. I'm I'm 100 percent optimistic. <laughs> uh, I th- just the, that first two games, uh, these first two games were kind of a microcosm of what the season has been. Like uh, a kind of like gritty win and then like a sloppy loss, mm-hmm. and just like the like Jason said, they they played terribly. They didn't even play that well in game one, right. and they they still won. Like they I, shot not, the ball so well, not necessarily convincingly, but but they won in a in a fashion that made me feel good about it. Game two, they played really terribly, lost by seven. Uh, I feel good about it. If they take away a couple it, of those Rubio threes and they didn't win, four more. Sh- you make four shots in the fourth quarter. Yeah, mm-hmm. or make <laughs> them make any shots in the fourth. That's it. It, it wouldn't one. have been the Thunder if they had just, you know, looked really good in. Well, not really good, but they looked good in game one, especially with Paul George shooting the ball. And then you come out in game two and you win convincingly again. Are you? I mm. mean, that wouldn't have really like have the Thunder. Right. Yeah, the Thunder kind of... It would have felt really right to me. To, lo- to win game one, and then I just knew game two was going to be extremely yeah. tough to win because the Thunder just struggle whenever you really hope that they finally <laughs> like get it together. They just struggle. It would have completely gone against the narrative of what this season has right. been. So give me your reasons for opt- optimism here, Jason. I know that I cut you off. Wasn't you- that what I just said? Did, yeah, you did? I think so. Okay. What about reasons for pessimism? Anybody have this? Just Utah Jazz fans. I think. <laughs> well, uh, man, I, I think I'll, I got some. I'll, I'll try and hop on this. I, I, of course, I'm you know, thunder blue tinted glasses all the time, like huge homer. So I don't want to be pessimistic, but I'll, I'll, I'll try. I'll, I'll try give to it, be realistic give it about it. Give it a try. Um, I, I think you know Donovan Mitchell's lack of fear as a rookie. I, I think that's that's a reason to be pessimistic. He, he's only getting better. He's only getting all that playoff experience. That's definitely something that, Speaking especially going that, going back home. I, I think mm-hmm. he can go off. I think uh, Stephen Adams foul trouble. I, I think that the fact that the Thunder are letting the Jazz his health. dictate his health, yeah. his health. and uh, the the fact that the Jazz are are making like they're dictating the way the game's played. Uh, the Thunder aren't playing their own game. They, they should be able to force Utah to play a certain way, but Utah's doing that to the Thunder. I agree on that Donovan Mitchell point. I think it's really incredible of him to have withstood that nineteen to zero run in the third and then just continued to be fearless himself with the thunder crowd going insane. Yeah. Like he didn't, he wasn't at all, at all phased and just played an incredible fourth quarter. Like you got to give it up to that guy. He's good. Really good. The thing I'm most worried about is I feel like Utah's, especially in game two, they're starting to generate a lot of shots. They, they like, right. Yeah. And that's what they do. They generate, they generate a lot of open looks, but they're missing. They're missing a lot of open looks. Mm-hmm. Well, they shoot from three. Nine for twenty nine and three in uh, game two. Not sure what they were in game one, but I know it wasn't great. And so, well, and I mean, if you reversed my Russ hasn't had a good game. Joe Ingles has had no good games also, and he's bound to go off at some point. You would think maybe I think not, they have maybe a not pretty if, good if P's on him. But yeah, I think they have a pretty good game plan with Joe Ingles, like to shut that. I mean, Paul George is just it's uh, that's yeah, the crazy part though. Joe Ingles was a game high plus twenty one. I mean, obviously it's a flawed stat. You can't right. put everything yeah. into yeah. it, yeah. but it's still a little. A little crazy that when he was on the floor, the Jazz were at their best. I thought something interesting that that Quinn Schneider, who who looks like William Fitchner, by the way, if you get he's he's an actor, he should look like. It's gotta be. May, it, 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 he, he <laughs> might maybe be, like might be Schneider's yeah. the cokehead version of this guy. Yeah. They, they they look very similar to be honest. Uh, anyways, um, so Joe Ingles was kind of staggered a, a little bit, and obviously like like Jay Crowder came in, and, like it worked out really well for him, but. Like I thought it was interesting the way that like it, it almost seems that Quinn Snyder's trying to get Joe Ingles away from Paul George as best he can to make sure that like when he does come in, like he will hit those threes and kind of fuel that jazz run. Yeah, to start the games, and we kind of talked about this, and this is kind of swaying away from where we were just at, but it just popped in my head. You're seeing like the first couple of possessions, first couple of thunder possessions, they're like having trouble making one pass or holding like, the onto the ball by themselves. The first pass is difficult to make and mm-hmm. that's not a good way to start the game. Yeah, they are, should start Are we better. delusional to be optimistic in the scene? It's very possible. No. <laughs> that's like the no. most delusional answer probably. The, the, no. Absolutely not. The answer no. is probably both. Yeah, uh, both. it's probably yes and no. 
So it's probably just no, though, so <laughs> as well. <laughs> is, is game three a must win in your eyes? No. It's very important, but to say it's must win that they'll lose a series if they don't win game three, no. I'll say I think that. it's a must win when you're down three to one. Agreed. That's the time when you got to win, because otherwise that you're That seems done. like the most likely scenario where the Thunder would be like, oh, now we'll, do so it. we'll win these. No. Yeah. For my own health and wellness, yeah, it's a must win. <laughs> I say no, but if they do lose... Everyone's going to To me, game four is a must win. I think you have to split here. Have to split. You can't go down 3-1. That would be nice. I, I think that's... If we split. Not if we went down 3-1. Yeah. Just gotta, to clarify there. Got to at least get a split. Anybody have any keys to the game? Anything you're looking for here? Um, Adams needs to right, see some uh, sort of shaman to heal nice, him. It'd be nice to have one of those 20-point Adam, Adams games. Mm -hmm. That would be... Yeah, that's not happening. That'd be yeah, great. No, that's really not mm -hmm. I think my key to the game is Russ being a beast. 30 point game out of Russ? Yep. I'll take it. That's possible. No, I, I mean, I think we've talked about everything. It, I expect the Thunder. I, I, another huge thing would be energy. Like, yes. it seems like the Thunder have lacked, have not been able to match the energy um, throughout the game consistently with the Jazz. Yeah, the energy they had in that third quarter or in most of the first game. And what we'll a terrible again. time to have to try and figure that out when you're headed to Utah. Yeah. That's dumb. Yeah. You get the whole plane ride to try to figure it out. They're going to be so <laughs> They're excited. Drink, excited. They're just drinking Red Bulls all the way there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, we don't play for another day. Uh, sure. Still so though. <laughs> I think just when, when the, like, between Steven Adams and Rudy Gobert, whoever, whoever ends up with, with the least fouls probably wins that game. Hmm. <laughs> hey, that's worked out that way so far. Maybe if it's not already empty, they could jump into Quinn Snyder's Coke bag and get a little jazzed up Ooh, before the game. Not uh -huh. a bad idea. Huh? Play the game. <laughs> yeah, let's play it. We just end there. Face that, real step, real step, face that. Real step, fake step, fake step, real step. All right, so we played this game a couple weeks ago. We introduced it a couple weeks ago. Mm. Pretty self explanatory in the name. I'm going to present a stat. You guys are going to tell me if that stat is real or if that stat is fake, okay? But this is playoff edition. This is exclusive to these playoffs. To these playoffs. Yes. Hey, Excellent. don't be cheating. Cheating already. Right. Jesus. Ooh. I'm always the one next to you. It's really yeah. funny because I can always just... get you some horse blinders. I also have, I have terrible eyes. Oh, okay. So. Well, That's good. Makes me feel better. Or he could just be saying that. Numero uno. Russell Westbrook's usage percentage in this series is higher than it was in the regular season, which in the regular season was 33.2%. That's a real stat. I'm going to go real stat just because it sounds like a trick. I'll, I'll, I think jo I'll join the fellas. Going real? Real stat. It's actually a fake stat. Yeah. It is lower <laughs> than it was. In the, uh, <laughs> cool, cool your jets, bro. It's actually lower. He's at 31.9. Hmm. Kind of unexpected, right? I get think we all would expect that to, to climb up. Let's get it back up there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Real step, real step, fake step. All right, so number two, the Thunder are averaging more passes per game in these playoffs than they did in the regular season. Real step. That feels like a real step. trick. Um, <laughs> That's not the game. It's not trick or treat. Well, no, he said the first one sounds like a trick. That definitely sounds like a trick. But so I will go fake stat. So we got real, real, fake, fake and real. real. It's fake stat. They're way below. 217 passes per game in the playoffs where they averaged 254 in the regular season, which is easily last in, in, uh, in the playoffs amongst Stevens playoffs. You're wrong. <laughs> fake step, real step, real step, fake step. Is that concerning though at all? Like, yeah, it's is not it, good. I mean, I, feel, I was surprised that two of you went real because it was like, it's well, very clear. There's been two plays where they passed the ball quite a bit. So I was like, that seems more than I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Are we? They, they, don't, they don't move the ball that like They've been moving. Like, I feel like they've been moving the ball well. It's just they haven't been doing it with that as many passes. You know who moves the ball well? The bench sometimes. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's the one I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. That one pass that they made. They talked about that on NBA TV before the game. You're no, are we offline? Yeah. Oh, it didn't work. Video's yeah. not working. It's recording, though. Oh, no. Working. Oh. Let's keep going. Weird. All right, number three. Right? Yep. Amongst lineups that have played significant minutes together in the playoffs, the starters and Grant in place of Adams. So the starters plus Grant in place of Adams has been the most effective. What's effective? What do you say effective? Was? Uh, meaning like the best plus minus. 
per one, the best net rating. I'm going real stat at this point because there have been two fake stats in a row. Pl- Gotta go real stat. Playing the odds, huh? Yep. I'll go fake stat. I'm going to go real stat because Steven Adams has the lowest plus minus oh, and Jeremy Grant also oh. has the highest Dang plus minus. It's also it, good. It is a real stat. No. They're plus 42.9 points per 100 possessions. That is correct. Wow. Pretty impressive. Nine plus minutes on the court together. So I wonder, I would love to see the numbers when, like, if go, how many of that is with Gobert out there? Because extremely be amount. pleasantly surprised with how well Grant has looked, which I was Agreed. extremely worried about. Start Grant, you know? <laughs> That's a fake stat. Real stat. stat. It would Real be stat. a fake stat. Fake stat. Number four, along the lines of the last question, Jeremy Grant has the best on-off numbers on the team in the playoffs. Fake stat. Real stat. Jesus Christ. I'm going to go <laughs> fake, Not an fake option. stat. It's a real stat. Yeah! Oh my He's a plus ass. 25.1 net that per 100 possessions. good. So when the team's worse when he's off the floor, the team's better when he's on the floor. And he's going to seems like he's going to make a lot of money then. I know. Oh, no. Yeah. Real stat, real stat, fake stat. Number five. Paul George and Carmelo Anthony have generated a total of seven points off of assists this series. Say that again? Paul George and Carmelo Anthony have generated a total of seven points off of assists. Them this assisting? Yes, they've assisted real stat. to contribute to seven points. Fake stat. Mm-hmm. I'll say real stat. Real stat. Woo, really? Paul George has one assist. Yep. Melo has two assists. Very few, very few. Adams is the only one besides Russ that has double figures and generated points off of assists. He didn't even play very much. He's generated 10 points off of assists. He has five assists. So I bet some of them are three. Where's Raymond Felton? Not Not good. Not there. Wow. Does Raymond Felton have an assist? That would. Good question. I'm not sure if he does. Is that the next (laughs) (laughs) step? It's not. (laughs) After two games. The Jazz are dead last in spot-up shot attempts amongst teams in the playoffs. Hmm. Fake stat. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> fake Miller? stat. Real stat. It's a fake stat. They're actually first in shot attempts. Whoa. Spot-ups. Yeah. yeah. Really? We just talked about first. how many they've been taking. Yes. Did we talk about that? A little bit. Where was I? We brought nah, it up. Nah, you were zoning out. You're talking, thinking about them corn nuts. <laughs> Ray, Raymond Felton did have three assists in game two. Oh. At a boy, Ray. Fake stat. Real stat. Real stat. Fake stat. Last one. After two games, obviously, the Jazz are dead last in field goal percentage on spot up shots among all teams. <laughs> That's a real stat. <laughs> in the in the playoffs. That's a real. That stat. Seems real. I'm gonna go real. It's fake. Yeah, cool. ah, shit. That's you terrible. Guys suck. What? I got baited. They're third, yeah. to, they're third to last. They're shooting 31.1% oh, okay. off uh, off uh, spot-up shot attempts. Who's the worst? Not good. Um, Thunder are second to last. I'm not sure who hmm. the worst is. And just for fun, that, well, that's wrong. Scoop Thunder are second to last in spot-up shot attempts, which Utah's first. Mm-hmm. And then the Thunder are fourth in percentage-wise. Yeah. In, uh, in, yeah. Take more that's of those. That. Right? To generate a little more. Do some Twitter questions? Let's do the tweet, Twitter questions. Tweet, 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 tweet. Not even saying tweet anymore. It's just, just <laughs> I just go as high as I can. <laughs> From Ben Burke at Ben Burke 10. Do any of these refs make it to the next round of the playoffs? Uh, yeah, not the not game two. Not game two. Well, he, here's the problem that I have with that is that. All the refs, I think, are so terrible this year that they have to make it to the <laughs> second round because otherwise they won't have any officials to run these games. Yeah, you can watch the other games as well, and there's bad calls well, throughout. Eventually, well, I mean, they're also tearing off rounds, so get them out of here. From Chris Farrell at Chris Farrell 3, why are we so bad? <laughs> oh, no, we're already here. Lose uh, one game. God, we suck. <laughs> I mean, that sounds about right. Yeah. This We're, team, we'll be fine. Yeah, this maybe. team has really uh, done some damage on people's mental health and For physical sure. health. I think all of our psyches season. are just have been tormented all year. Yeah. So I yeah. just no stability. Like we feel like we were raised by a single parent <laughs> that wasn't great. You know. Yeah. All right. No Next. comment. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> From Sam Finesti at the Thunder Geeks. 
is a two-way to tank. <laughs> that would make me laugh. That's a good one. We could get that pick, though. From, uh, okay, from uh, Thun Durup, at Donkey Punch Death. <laughs> what do you think of giving Dakari minutes? Sounds I'm obviously terrible. not, la- I'm not <laughs> laughing at the question. I'm laughing at the Donkey Punch. But. Especially whenever we just talked so much about Jeremy Grant yeah. and how well he's doing. No way. Yeah, I, I don't see it. But, you know, not it's like Dakari, but. hard to say no to something you haven't seen but it's just hard to s- see that working out you yeah. say no to new things all of the time <laughs> it's pretty much your life yeah that's yeah. how i've gotten through life mm. oh, tried anything from... new since age five <laughs> no nice or not i guess or nuts. <laughs> <laughs> from zach Weber 33 at the ammo 33 favor seem to get the better of mel last night does this matchup eventually cost us the series or does billy donovan have a counter like I said earlier, I have a tough time believing that Derek Favors can be the, the factor in the series that wins the Jazz the series. I, I can't see that happening. So, no. It was a really good adjustment, though. It was. It was good. And it's on, like it's like it says in the question, like it's on Billy Donovan to negate that and come up with some another way to get rid of that. And maybe, maybe, maybe even more than Billy Donovan, it's on Melo himself. Yeah. Like Box dude, you're out, gonna bro. play. Billy Donovan's going to play. But it you. wasn't. It wasn't just Melo. No, though. it wasn't. It, it wasn't. But he has to take some pride in winning that match. I mean, there were, there were moments on rebounds where four guys were standing around watching Gobert and Favors grab rebounds. I'm like, what? Does anyone want to try? Mm-hmm. Negative. No. They didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> From Dakota Baker, at Bearded Thunder One. Can you tell people to chill out? This is what we needed. Our guys needed to realize they can't play like ass for <laughs> six minutes at a time and still pull out a win. I but like they can this guy. Yeah, I'll <laughs> agree with that. Touche, yeah, sir. With it. I mean, if they do that, if they come out of the gates in Game Three like that again, it's like what? <laughs> like what Pe- are you people doing? People are gonna lose their shit. I don't. I don't think I would go as far as this is what we needed. Like this is what we've had all year. <laughs> yeah. Like it just. How much is that? Of that is on Donovan. I don't even know anymore. For so long, no one knows. Uh, Well, uh, like, obviously the coach has drawn up the first couple of plays. That's how it works. You say, all right, here's what we're going to play. Run on the first play. Here's what we're going to run on the second play. Here's what we're going to run on the third play. When when your players come out and act like they're taking naps and have no hands to hold on to things, that doesn't help. Okay. Uh, Ah, (laughs) moving on. Uh, We got two that are pretty similar. One from Brian Davis for MVP at CSenor405. One from uh, Shifei at Real Feishi. Updated series predictions. Same. Same. Six. Yep. Six. Six. If they had won game two, I thought for sure they would win in five. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't, so six seems. I came real close to changing after game one, and I'm glad I did, though. Yeah, you got to stick to your gun. You're still going to sweep them. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. From Drew at Drew611, does it put any doubt in you that we just split the series heading into Utah? And how many boxes do we need checked to win against the Jazz? From, number one, it confirms this. everything we've known about this team. The they split. are who they thought Number they two, were. the boxes. That wasn't it. The boxes being checked, I think what he's referring to, is a tweet that I did yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I'm not really sure what they were. Number one was game controlling Russ. Number two was utilizing Adams. Number three was locked in mellow. Number four was playoff P. And number five was a non-negative bench. And we couldn't check any of those. zero of those. Zero, and they barely lost to the point that we've been talking about all day. How many of those boxes so do you what? have to check? In what? Utah, I say you have to check three of the five. Yeah. I agree. like that. And what? they don't even have to be – doesn't have to be I – think, I think maybe you said this earlier. doesn't have to be – Probably. Paul George doesn't even have to be mellow. Mm-hmm. The other three, I think if you can check those, yeah. Adams, Bench, and Russ controlling the game, like that is 100% will lead to success. That sounds there. like a great, great but, game plan right there. Yeah. Agreed. Would you Why also, don't I read my tweets? Yeah. Should. Would you also agree that if you do get the playoff controlling Russ, and, or the, 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 the game controlling Russ, and you get playoff P, that you should probably win by 20, even if you yeah. just have those two That things. sounds like yeah. a perfect combo. I'd, I'd like, I think... Even more, if I'm going to pick two of them, though, I like Russ and the non-negative bench. Oh, yeah, like, to I, me, I agree. that is... Those are the two that's really that's key ones. How much of that is because you just simply can't really trust Paul George as far as consistency Ooh. goes? It sucks so much. That's sad. That hurts. That's <laughs> sad. Sad. <laughs> From OKC NBA champions 16-0, and 0, which mm. should probably be 16-1 and 1 now. Mm. Uh, well, I'm sure it is. Who is he going for? And Danny Rodero. <laughs> I like the is Warriors. there anything... More 
is there are anything more frustrating in the planet than Melo bricking two big threes in transition covered from very deep? <laughs> yes! Wait, what's no. this? <laughs> no! No! That's what you meant. I was talking to Jason during while you were reading it. No! Uh, I say there is. No, there's not. There's not. <laughs> Listen, I, mean, I think... it's kind of open. The problem is, yeah. is you bring Melo in this year and... The hell do you expect? <laughs> you hope that, like, we thought, he, we everyone thought Melo was going to be better than he's been, right? So we hope, all along, we hope that he's going to actually bring in the playoffs. Uh, he was all right in game one. Not good in game two. He, he's got to take the shots if he's going to make the shots, and the Thunder need him to make these shots, so I can, Not I guess I can live shots. with those shots. Thunder don't need him to make I those mean, shots. I had he made those, it would have been yeah. all right. He didn't. I, he won't. Didn't. He won't. Yeah, that's the you're point. right. No, he won't. You're right. He won't. And that's what that's what's frustrating about it to me. But at the same time, I can't blame him for taking him because someone's got to. Someone's well, not with it. 22 seconds left on the shot clock. True. Hey, it's always a good shot if it goes in. It's true. Bro, I'm always it didn't. in forever art. <laughs> yeah, <it didn't. laughs> and always in forever art. <laughs> the Jazz count of the Thunder leaving Rubio open by sliding him to the corner on all drives. Shortest three pointer in the game. How do you think the Thunder will adjust to stop that? Or do they at all? Do we think Rubio will shoot that well every game? I do Hell not know. <laughs> Of course he's not going to shoot that well. Yeah, yeah, like I said earlier, I just think he got everything in an exact rhythm, in basketball rhythm, and it was easy for him. He shot six for 16 and five more threes. He was five for eight from three, meaning he was one for eight from everywhere else. Mm. You got to get in the passing lanes. Make him shoot those other ones. You don't have to You don't have to stick to Rubio beyond the three-point line. You just have to get in the passing lanes and make the passes difficult and make it not so easy for him to get to the spots. And for The offense was just too easy for, for the Jazz the spot up attempts is, is like I revealed earlier. That's just that's a little worrisome to me. They gotta they gotta stop that. And you have to make him continue to hit threes. Like you have to mm -hmm. make him. That is the shot that you give him. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. So. You live with it. The, th the thing is, is when you were watching him and when he caught the ball and when he started to shoot the ball, you knew it was in. Yeah, like, he looked confident. Yeah. Well, and it was just so easy. Like like you were saying, like it wasn't like a difficult thing. No. It's not difficult at all. You just make it, just right? Put it in the thing. Yeah. I'm going to move this Mellow. one up since it's relevant. From Jazzy Ute at Joe Ingles for life. Okay. Hmm. Why do you make fun of Rubio's shooting in game one when all three of your stars shot like garbage? Ha 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 Will you acknowledge your terrible takes in your podcast? By the way, <laughs> that question originally said when all three of your stars shock like huh. garbage. We corrected nice it for tweets, you. Nice tweets, bro. <laughs> we corrected it for you. You're welcome. Number one. <laughs> Number two, uh, all three of the stars didn't shoot like garbage in game one, mm. so I don't know what you're talking about. We can not We can laugh at Rubio and not have an idea that they are going to shoot it yeah. like garbage in game two. Huh. Debunked. And <laughs> we said we would live yeah. and die by Rubio shooting threes, and we died by it, and we're fine with that. Congrats to Ricky. I yeah. hope he enjoys this moment. Good job, you <laughs> greasy little bitch. <laughs> <It> oh, wow. <laughs> Hey, yeah. man, he, he shot the ball well. Got to oh. give him credit for that. But as far as terrible takes, what terrible takes did we make? I don't know. Anytime I make a terrible take, I will say it's a terrible mm. take. Yet to happen on this podcast. Most of I'll my tell takes you that. are okay, terrible. <laughs> uh, by the Yet way, to happen. Ha have fun with that 28.4% uh, uh, from three on pull-ups uh, there, Ricky. Yeah. You're really getting specific <laughs> there <laughs> on pull-ups. Yeah. But in all seriousness, thanks for listening, bro. Yeah, no, it's cool. Um, We got notes? Or more? Wait, wait, oh, no, we, we still, more. No, no, we still have more. Yeah, no notes. I'm, just, I'm, okay. I'm very, I'm still a little uh, jazzed up, if you will. I see what you did. <laughs> Nailed it. I'm so pissed off your stupid square ass state. Oh, bro, I'm Harry <laughs> at H lot seven. Adams in foul trouble lost us this game. Favors took full advantage of that. What adjustments should be made to avoid this if Adams gets caught in foul trouble again? It's funny to make fun of a state's shape. Yeah. <laughs> we have a cool state shape. I'm sorry. Yeah, we look like a pan. Yeah, it does like a pot. We look More like, like a, a pot. pot. Right. Saucepan. Pan yeah. handle. Uh, what was the question? Uh, <laughs> Adams got in foul trouble. How do we not make that happen? Or, or what how do we do, we do if we that adjust? happens again? Yeah. I don't really understand, though. The favors took full advantage of it. He took full that part advantage I don't really... of it, pretty much everything. I mean, I don't really get that part he of was, it. But I mean, the, the rebounding aspect of it, obviously. I don't know what that has... I, I mean, I guess. I, to me, those two don't have anything to do with each other. What adjustments should be made to avoid this if Adams gets caught in foul trouble again? It's really on... For me, it's it's... 
on those other guys like uh, Patterson has to be better whenever he is on favors. If he could do literally anything in this series, that would be super helpful. <laughs> yeah. Patterson. No, He's I agree. He's upsetting me so much right but now. But other than that, like, what do you... Favors should not be that big of an impact. Talked about Mello, Brandon. You talked about Mello, so I assume that's kind of where you would lean here. Mello has to do a better job on favors Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, and to your point, Patterson, yeah, he has to be better. There was a play last night in the fourth quarter where Paul George actually drove to the rim, missed a layup, mm. miss, missed an easy layup. Patterson gets the offensive rebound and was like, woo, he got an offensive rebound, and then he had a layup and he missed it. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, dude, yeah. that's what he does, though. Like, he is so terrible around the rim. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Next. <laughs> From Goober Petia, at Goober Petia. Off topic, but are you satisfied with the overall level of the pregame video shown on the big screen before introductions? I remember adoring those one to two years ago, and now they're all just the same. I think I'm with that, but I don't know if it's because you're just used to them at this point, or if it's... Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, it, it's hard to make special ones after they've been special. For but someone. isn't that their job, though, to progressively yes, get is. better? Yes, well, uh, you also have to look at, I mean, the... the the expectations with those teams a few years ago mm-hmm. that because th- those were teams that like they're going to win a championship or this is going to be a disappointment and right now i'm not going to say that like mm. you want them to win a championship but it's not like the, the end of the world if they don't like these last few years have been it's been a hard pill to swallow for thunder fans like they're just they're not so as good as they were be disappointed in the videos well, it's, it's hard. I think your expectations drive your perception of what those videos are. Oh, God. Expectations with this team. Don't even yeah. start. I don't, don't even start. Don't even start. Uh, from Joshua Corbett at Warrior Corbett. What would feel worse? James Harden winning a title before Russ or Paul George <sighs> leaving? Definitely. Why did I just read that? That sucked. I didn't know that what was the, a that that was I, I should have looked question. at that before. Hey, I even, yeah, I like, it's a good question. Guys, he listens to our That's podcast and hard yell at him. No, I mean, it's not his fault. That was just... It's not of his fault, it's though. Just hurt. <laughs> I mean, he tweeted. Like, I'm not, yeah, what no, is it, I'm, though? It's Harden. Yeah. Uh, is it? Yes. 100%. I think it's Paul George leaving. Mm-hmm. Well, because, like, if Paul George leaves, then where's our chance to actually win? Yeah, it probably but if is Harden wins one, like, that's probably going to happen at some point. Nah, so. it ain't happening. Right. I, yeah, I, Brandon, I'm with you. I think it is Paul George leaving. He's gone, guys. Oh, shit. <laughs> I hate to break this to you. I told you no. this. He's gone. Times. He's been getting some it. sort of tattoo. This is it. He's staying. Yeah. He likes to fish. Oh, really uh, make it on the fish. Uh, we, we got to close it out. No. Close it out. Sad, Something man. happy. Bro, uh, we, we've got a pair of them. One from Todd Lido at Toddboy23. One from the Big Kiwi at Thank Steven you. Adams Son one <laughs> Uh, how can Abrinas and Patterson be better used in a series where making threes is very important to cracking Utah's defense? This was something that we should have talked about earlier. Was Alex Abrinas playing 15 minutes and only getting two shots? He played 10 minutes in that, f- or I think it was right around 10 minutes in that first half with no shots. Mm-hmm. That can't happen. Like you're, he's so bad on the defensive end that that you just you cannot have him out there for 10 minutes in the first half and not get him a single shot. Definitely had to be. Uh, some sort of adjustment by the Jazz, I would think, to to stick on him and make sure he's not getting yeah. looks. And we all know when, when teams focus on Alex Abrinas, he has a tough time getting open. And I think a couple of the shots that he got and made in game one were, were shots that were created off of a little bit of uh, craziness and Jeremy Grant driving to the rim in game one and finding him. So, yeah, you're right. He's got to get shots if he's going to play. Um, Got to adjust, though. But That's I, what scares me. It scares me that he didn't get shots in this game, and how's that How's that going to go going forward? I mean, I think, I think that goes along with one of the Jazz adjustments in this game. Is for one, more defensive att- intensity, and they were getting out on guys and pushing up into them, and it wasn't easy to get shots like it was in the first game. So they got to figure out a way to get loose. Got to get loose. Loosey-goosey. Got to get loose. That's the name of this episode. <laughs> yeah, there you I go. Like got to yeah. get loose. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Sorry about the video. So what happened? It just cut out? Yeah, the internet problems. So. Really? Yeah. So I'm. we'll try to get it pieced together and all that stuff afterwards. But. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Follow us on Twitter at OKC Thunderheads. Justin's over at Thunder Tie. Subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> the vi- it's just kind of funny to say now. now <laughs> but the do video it, though. Up. It'll be better later. iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, uh, Stitcher, Overcast. Anywhere you find po- podcasts, you can check us out on OKCThunderheads.com as well for all of your Thunder needs. So we got, what, Game 3 on Saturday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then this we have Aftershock. Mm-hmm. Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Aftershock on, yep, and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So Aftershock on Saturday. Then Game 4 
on Monday, and we'll have a full pod for you guys on Tuesday. So until then, and as always, thunder up.